Finally, the Buckeyes may get tested. Mark Rogers TV and ProFootballCentral.com on Wisconsin at Ohio State coming up at the shoe on Saturday night. Urban Meyer said at his weekly press conference this week that this is a classic game. If he meant the series, maybe. If he means this game, we'll just have to wait and see. But it's been one of the better series and more important series in the Big Ten. Jim Tressel dominated this conference. He won six consecutive Big Ten titles, either outright or shared. But if you go back to 2001, when Tressel took over the Buckeyes, Ohio State just 7-5 and five against Wisconsin. They have won five of the past six, but most of those games very, very close, especially the last two years. Braxton Miller uh, made the biggest throw of his career at the time, really his coming out party two years ago in Columbus down late to the Badgers and that Russell Wilson team that went to the Rose Bowl. Braxton Miller finding Devin Smith from 40 yards out on the bomb, the improbable play, the scramble to the right, and throwing to the back of the end zone, winning for the Buckeyes in an upset over Wisconsin. Last season, Buckeyes win it in overtime, 21-14. to Wisconsin really dominated the second half of that football game. Buckeyes jumped out 14-0. Wisconsin outgained Ohio State 360 to 237. So Ohio State, despite having the top scoring offense and top total offense yards per game in the Big Ten, outgained 360 to 237. And the Badgers dominated on the ground 206 to 140. But the Buckeyes scored in overtime to win it uh, 21 to 14. Let's shake down this matchup, starting with the Ohio State offense. And most quarterback controversies are born out of poor play on the field. Who's going to be the starting quarterback? Because we basically don't have the guy. At Ohio State, they certainly have the guy, and they may have two guys. Of course, Braxton Miller and Kenny Guyton. Miller, the fifth leading vote getter in the Heisman Trophy balloting last season, uh, got hurt a couple weeks ago against San Diego State. Kenny Guyton capably filling in again for Ohio State. This is the Guyton who pulled off the miracle comeback against Purdue to preserve the undefeated season for the Buckeyes last year at home, uh, scoring eight down the stretch and pulling off the, the game against the Boilers and scoring the touchdown in overtime. This is Kenny Guyton who played so well last week against Florida A&M. Yes, you can put the asterisks. Next to that performance, the six touchdowns setting an Ohio State single game record. Threw four touchdowns on the coast against Cal a few weeks ago as well. The difference between these two quarterbacks is sheer talent. They're similar quarterbacks in the way that they will be utilized. They're dual threat quarterbacks, not prolific passers. Braxton Miller's got a stronger arm. He's faster. He's a bigger guy, bigger frame tougher to tackle, also can split on a dime, cut on a dime, make guys miss, and run over guys. Braxton Miller more physically gifted. That That's the reason why Braxton Miller was the number one quarterback recruit coming out of high school. Kenny Guyton, this is the reason why he's just seeing playing time as a junior and senior due to injury. Kenny Guyton is very mobile. It's not that he's not mobile. He's fast. He's elusive but nothing close to Braxton Miller, who's in that special category. Kenny Guyton doesn't have a strong arm compared to Braxton Miller. It's sufficient. It's good enough. It's fairly strong. It's decent. Kenny Guyton, though, gets his teammates to rally around him. We saw it in the Purdue game last year. We've seen it thus far this season. His teammates like him. He's a leadership. Uh, He has leadership capabilities and qualities, and Braxton Miller is just growing into that. But Braxton Miller despite um, uh, the less experience in regards to class, uh, has certainly started more games and played more time at Ohio State and has the reps under his belt. But the knee could be an issue. Urban Meyer says that if Braxton Miller is healthy, that he'll most likely still utilize both quarterbacks, but Braxton Miller will get the start. Miller struggled against the Badgers last season, 10 of 18, 97 yards passing, Rushed it 23 times for 48 yards. You've got to include sacks in that, so that's a bit deceiving. But still, 23 rushes for 48 yards. Braxton Miller, by far, had his worst game against Wisconsin. They did a masterful job defending Braxton Miller and shutting him down to no points in the second half. The big difference between Ohio State 2012 and 2013, despite leading the Big Ten in points and yardage last season, 
The Buckeyes have so many more options and weapons this season. Last season, it was Corey Brown who caught 60 balls, was the dependable uh, security blanket for Braxton Miller, caught most of the short stuff, averaged like 10 or 11 yards per catch. Then the guys downfield, in particular Devin Smith, a bit sporadic. Devin Smith, much better. Corey Brown, still very dependable and the leading receiver for Ohio State. But now you've got Jordan Hall, who's been waiting his entire career to get as many touches as he's gotten this season. 30 against Cal, just running the football for 168 yards. Jordan Hall has scored eight touchdowns. He is fifth in the Big Ten in rushing, and he would be much higher, except that they pulled him after four carries last week against Florida A&M. And Dontre Wilson, when Urban Meyer first arrived in Columbus and said, I've got some nice players, but I want that Percy Harvin guy, this is the guy he had in mind. Dontre Wilson, the 5A State Player of the Year in high school in Texas. He is a flash, averaging 9.3 yards per carry on limited number of carries. He's just a freshman. He's fumbled a couple times, so they're not going to trust him a number of times, and he's not the type of player to tote it uh, 20 and 25 times. He's going to get one or uh, probably a handful of carries, and he's been a factor in the passing game as well with 10 receptions already in the Buckeyes' three games. Also, in addition by Carlos Hyde, of course, led uh, the Buckeyes in scoring last season with 17 touchdowns, 16 on the ground, and he was probably the reason why Ohio State escaped Madison with a victory last season. They finally gave the ball to Carlos Hyde late in the fourth quarter in an overtime, and he was a man. 15 carries, 87 yards, and two touchdowns against Wisconsin last year. Of course, he had the three-game suspension to start out this season, but he was back and had five or six carries against a and last week. Carlos Hyde provides another threat, and he should get the tough yards on a third and fourth and short. Again, this Wisconsin defense did a job against the Buckeyes last season, and they're claiming... Uh, guys like nose guard Bo Allen and Chris Borland, uh, their uh, all Big Ten linebacker, that they're going to draw from that experience. They feel good that they shut down this offense and held it in check, especially in the second half and in overtime last season, that they think that they can draw from that. They expect Urban Meyer to come up with some wrinkles, some different stuff, and they and they certainly identify the additional playmakers the Buckeyes have, but they think it's going to be generally the same type of stuff that they're going to see out of the spread formation, and they feel prepared for it. So Wisconsin on defense, they are a typical Wisconsin defense. Not elite, but extremely good, fundamentally sound. Uh, they've got some issues in the secondary just based on youth, and that's where I think the Buckeyes could take advantage. The front seven is very strong with uh, Bo Allen, the nose guard in particular, and we mentioned Borland uh, playing the inside linebacker spot as the Wisconsin Badgers have moved from a 4-3 to a 3-4 this season. 30 total tackles to lead Wisconsin. Borland has been among the Big Ten leaders in tackles for the past few years. He has been the leader and mainstay on this defense, but the secondary is young. I think the Buckeyes use Devin Smith to run the big routes. Corey Brown underneath, Jordan Hall out of the backfield, Dontre Wilson catches passes. I think the Buckeyes have a number of ways that they can beat Wisconsin in the passing game if Miller or Guyton is successful and accurate, and that's not always the case. Okay, Wisconsin did a nice job in their biggest test of the season at Arizona State in terms of holding down a pretty talented runner in Marion Grice, uh, 22 carries, 84 yards. His longest run was just 18 yards, so the Badgers did a nice job there. They did give up seven pass plays of over 20 yards in that game. They gave up a ton of passing yardage, 351 to Taylor Kelly, although Kelly did throw it 51 times. The Arizona State wide receivers uh, certainly helped out the Badgers' secondary a number of times by dropping passes. So that's the deal there, a tough Wisconsin defense, but may not have the speed at the outside linebacker positions to contain Ohio State's play on the edges. They did last season, but they've got more options to deal with this year. Let's look at the Badgers on offense. Uh, Joel Stavi uh, completing 63% of his passes, six touchdowns and three picks, 15 of 30 for a buck 87 against Arizona State in his toughest test. He did complete 12 of 19 against Purdue last week for a buck 58 and one interception. This is where Wisconsin gets in trouble. They have one 
very talented, very dependable wide receiver they can trust in Jared Aberderis. He's caught 23 for 365 and three touchdowns. And he's been the best Wisconsin receiver almost since arriving on campus. As we've talked about since spring football, we did a video post then throughout the summer and into this season, Wisconsin has to find second and third options in the passing game. Certainly they have one of the better tight ends in the Big Ten and Jacob Pedersen, who uh, has caught eight for 101 and one touchdown. But he left the Purdue game due to a leg injury and his status is uncertain at this point. So is it Jordan Frederick who's caught six passes, but only two for 16 yards against Arizona State in the one test this season for the Badgers? Is it Jeff Duckworth who caught that 51-yarder along the sideline to get the Badgers in field goal range that they could have won the game against Arizona State? Or is it Kenzel Doe, a guy that we identified during spring practice as the possibility to be the athletic guy, the big framed guy, the guy that could box out on jump balls and really wrestle defenders and fight for the football and win those battles one-on-one downfield. Wisconsin needs a second and third option in the passing game. The running game set. Melvin Gordon has been spectacular, averaging almost 12 yards per carry. We understand Tennessee Tech and UMass were the two first opponents for Wisconsin, but against Arizona State, he had two very long runs and uh, totaled 193 rushing, two touchdowns, and 15 carries for Melvin Gordon. James White, of course, exceptional, 442 yards, seven plus per carry, three touchdowns, and Corey Clement, who we don't expect to get a lot of carries in a huge game like this because it will certainly... Uh, go to Gordon and White. They will uh, vie for most of the carries in this game. Of course, Ohio State's got playmakers all over the field and four and five uh, star recruits. Uh, Noah Spence is having an outstanding first part of the season in 2013 with five tackles for loss and two and a half sacks. Ryan Shazier, we consider him to be the best defensive player in the Big Ten. And if he's not, it could be Bradley Roby at corner who picked off his first pass last week against Florida A&M. The Buckeyes on defense were missing tackles against Cal. That's been the only competitive or somewhat competitive game for Ohio State, and they were missing tackles in that game. Difference in this one, Wisconsin very limited in the passing attack. Jared Averderis, he's the guy. Jacob Pedersen to a lesser extent, but he could be banged up. They need more options in the passing game. We don't believe in Joe Stavi as being the guy that can make the big plays on offense for Wisconsin. On the flip side, the Buckeyes have a number of options. Despite Wisconsin uh, certainly studying the game film and doing a great job of staying in position, using their technique, cutting off the edge, uh, helping each other out, we know Wisconsin's going to come serious to play, that they will do a fine job, do everything that they possibly can to make this a close game. But we like Ohio State with the speed and the talent winning at home, 31-20 31-20 to 20 over the Badgers. Now, we would love to hear your opinion on this football game. First, a big one in the Big Ten. Badgers, Buckeyes, right here on Mark Rogers TV and ProFootballCentral.com.